The last time on this channel where we covered some Conor McGregor sparring, it was basically the same reaction from me. It really upsets me for a different reason today than last time. Last time we were talking about him throwing big kicks, he wasn't wearing shin pads and he had shoes on. And I was like, what the heck? Why are you doing that? Today he has shin pad pads on. He actually has a headgear on too, but he's going crazy hard and he knocks his opponent down. We're gonna look at a couple different clips. I'm just gonna give you my opinion if this is necessary, especially when we don't even have a fight date for Connor yet, right? If he was, you know, six weeks away and they're like, okay, I'm really ramping up, then that's fine. Occasionally these high, high level fighters need to go really hard, but a couple things about this really bug me. You're Conor McGregor, you're doing some hard rounds. We already know this guy hits exceptionally hard. He's proven that throughout the years with his UFC career. When you wanna go this hard, should you be sparring with guys who are noticeably smaller than you? Probably not. Connor's put on a lot of size. He's a big dude now. And when he does these rounds, when he's deciding, okay, I want to go hard, why not grab some bigger fighters so you have less chance of knocking them down? When we saw this, when he was getting ready for Floyd Mayweather, he was doing sparring or boxing and it was all over the internet. He did these rounds with uh, Polly Maganat. I don't even know the guy's last name. You know, throw it up. Throw it up there. <laughs> he has this weird last name. Anyway, he was doing rounds with them and they were going crazy harder than the clips we saw, just swinging away on each other. And I was going, why would you grab a dude who fights at something like 140 pounds? Get somebody who fights above your weight class or at least at your weight class. But when we get these going here, when we see these clips, I'm noticing number one, he is blasting in the front kicks to the body. Some people might go, oh, that's a jerk move. If you're gonna kick hard, I would say, okay, the body's better than the head. But swinging at head level, especially with that cross of his, when he's throwing it, it's not like he's pulling it, he's whipping it through. And there's a number of times before he actually knocks somebody down where I go, oh, if that had landed, that could be the end. And not just the end of the sparring that day, that could be the end of this guy's fight career for a while. People have to take big layoffs after concussions and something which is not talked about enough is when we see high level fighters sparring, we need to make sure that people on the channel who are doing this for fun recognize that's not the normal way to spar. That's not a smart way to spar. Many people have been advocating for sparring being a little bit more toned down. Guys like Max Holloway and Donald Cerrone, they're still very successful, but they're more about protecting their brain now and getting the drilling and the timing done in other ways than hard sparring. And one of the biggest things that is gonna happen if you're trying to protect yourself, but you go to the gym and other people are sparring hard is you're not gonna have that ability to say to them, ooh, let's ease back, number one, because it's a little bit of a ego crack having to be the person to say that. But number two, if the other people have seen things like this, they go, oh, this is how the best guys in the world spar, and I have to do that to get better, you're gonna have a hard time convincing this opponent across from you that it should be a little bit less intense when we're sparring. So let's get to the knockdown clip. Connor doing his thing where he kind of drops his weight to the side, he leans, he leans, he loads up one, and then two. He hits the guy, the dude noticeably goes down, he checks on him for a second, and then they get back up and they keep sparring. There's people on the side watching, there's coaches there. If you get knocked down in sparring, it's probably a good time to call it. It's actually a very good time to call it. You should not be getting back up because you might be stunned. The next shot might knock you down a second time and more likelihood that the next time you get knocked down, it's going to be serious. Whereas if that knockdown that we just saw, if that guy got clipped, hit the floor, got back up, stopped, went back home, he's like, oh, I have no concussion symptoms, no headaches no vision trouble, maybe a week or two later he can get back to sparring. This way, if he gets clipped again or he keeps sparring with other people, he could leave and it could be a month before he's back in going, oh, okay, I feel 100% again. So guys, be smart. When you do get knocked down, which has never happened to me in a sparring session, never been knocked down, never got like close to that sensation of, oh shoot, I'm about to go down. And if it does happen, you gotta pull the plug you got to be responsible and take care of yourself and not let that ego take over. So stuff like this, I think is bad for the fight world to see because it's not the way we need to be sparring. And it's not especially not the way we need to be sparring if you're not getting ready for a high level 
big, big fight like Conor McGregor might be preparing for right now, even though we know he won't be fighting until probably at least March of next year. So it still seems pretty early for these hard rounds. So what do you guys think? Is there a time and a place for that type of sparring? Do you get into that sparring anymore? I try to avoid it, but I'd be interested to hear, are you guys trying to knock the other person down when you get in to do rounds? Let's call it there. Thanks for joining me, guys. As always, train hard, and I will see you back here soon for another video.